you guys Aaron here back with another moon update for you we are having a full moon coming up this Wednesday October 20th at 7 56 a.m pacific time this full moon takes place in the sign of Aries 27 degrees Aries so you know what that means this is the peak of the growth cycle for that Aries energy for 2021 for all of us as a collective and as individuals. So Aries, Aries is the warrior of the Zodiac. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. It is the cardinal fire sign. That cardinal energy gives it really good force. And that element of fire makes it hot, hot, hot. So people who have their sun in Aries, like a really well aspected sun in Aries, these people are just just so much energy just flowing through them. Uh, Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is often referred to as the planet of war, but that's really because he is very dominant. He is masculine. He gives us our physical drive, our physical force. So that is what this Aries energy is all about. How have you grown in those ways? Now, a lot of this is going to depend on where that sign of Aries is in your own natal chart. For example, if it's in your third house, your house of communication and sharing information, then you might be a warrior out there trying to share information right now. Uh, if, well, for example, myself, Aries using the uh, whole sign format, Aries comes through my fifth house, which is this house. It's a very playful house. And let me tell you something. When I play, I play hard. <laughs> I've always been like that. So that's, uh, that's why I give these 10 minute moon readings to let you know which area of your life these full, full moons or new moons will manifest for you. What kind of connections are being made with other celestial bodies for you? And you can really finely tune what it is you're trying to bring into fruition, especially with the new moons. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys and show you what's going on with this new moon, sorry, full moon. So first of all, I work with geocentric Western astrology. And that said, we put earth right here in the middle. And these guys right here, these are all the celestial bodies where they will be around us on October 20th at 7.56 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, so first we're gonna focus right here. This right here is the sun. And this right here is the moon. You can see that they are exactly opposite each other. Sun is at 27 degrees Libra. Moon is at 27 degrees Aries because Aries and Libra are opposite each other. And that's what happens every time we have a full moon. The sun and moon are opposite each other. Okay, so the moon at 27 degrees Aries, this puts us in the third deacon of the Aries season for that full moon. So this brings in a little twist of Sagittarius energy, which brings a little twist of adventurous energy. And that's exactly what I am going to be doing for this full moon. I will, I'm going to be out on a road trip going do all kinds of adventurous things. Um, also can add a little bit of optimism. That sign of Sagittarius can be very optimistic and can bring some faith into this full moon. Okay, so, and the sun at 27 degrees, we are almost done with Libra season. We are almost into Scorpio season. I'm excited for that because I happen to really enjoy Scorpio season. But as the moon has been transiting through this sign of Libra, which Libra is generally a pretty laid back energy. It's the sign of justice and fairness and partnerships and balance. But Mars right here has been transiting very, very close to the sun, kind of put in a little different twist to the Libra energy because Mars, again, is Aries ruler. It's the forceful energy. And when any two celestial bodies are right next to each other, they kind of blend together and work as one. So Mars has been bringing like a little extra heat to that sun in Libra energy. Okay, now something else I got to mention here. You can see there's this like red triangle. There's actually a couple of them right here in the middle of the chart. This is a combination of aspects. When I say an aspect, what I'm talking about is connections that are being made from one celestial body to another. For example, here's the sun and here's the moon. And you see there's this red line that goes from the sun to the moon. That's an opposition, okay? Now, when we see these guys right here, these are both squares that are coming off the sun and the moon and connecting to Pluto. This combination of aspects is called a T-square. Now, this is a challenging combination of aspects. However, it can bring some really good problem solving type energy, okay? Now, this Pluto right here, Pluto's finishing up in Capricorn. This is These next three years are going to be very interesting while Pluto finishes up in Capricorn. I will make another video about that because I've had people asking me about it. Uh, but Pluto rules our inner psyche, okay? So this full moon is basically making a ch challenging connection with our inner psyche. And in the sign of Aries, 
moon in Aries and with the sun right next to Mars, this can bring heated energy, some very uncomfortable energy. And so one thing I really wanted to put out there is that if you find yourself on days surrounding this full moon, October 19th, 20th, or 21st, probably more like October um, 19th or 20th, in a state of just feeling really agitated, and it's a lot of it's coming back from the inner psyche type thing, recognize that we're being influenced with that and it will pass, it will pass. It's really important to stay grounded and stay centered through this kind of full moon. Aries rules the head, okay? And th there can be this tendency for a hot head type energy when the moon, especially a full moon in Aries, but that can even be amplified with this T-square going to Pluto. So that's something I just wanted to put out there. Um, we finally have some things moving forward. Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter are no longer in retrograde. So it's finally, and Mercury too. Mercury is moving forward. It's finally time to put some things into action. Um, put your, you know, start really stepping forward with your goals again, that sort of thing. Um, I think one thing I'm, I'm, one more thing I'm going to mention, because we're getting into the last few degrees of this nodal transit through Gemini and Sagittarius. Let me break this down for you. This right here is the North Node, also known as Rahu. And this right here is the South Node, also known as Ketu, okay? North Node, Rahu, is where the celestial energy comes in. If you can picture like the ocean and the tides, this is where the tides come in. South Node, Ketu, is where the tides go out. So we are receiving with this North Node in Gemini at two degrees, Basically, because the, the nodes, I don't mean to confuse anybody too much, but the nodes are pretty much always in retrograde. So we're going to go from two degrees to one degree to zero degrees through this Gemini Sagittarius nodal transit. And when anything, any celestial body is in the first few degrees of a zodiac sign, it comes with an extra strength. It comes with like this, it's a lot of whatever that's the energy of that sign is, we're receiving a lot of it. So we're receiving a ton of very strong Gemini energy and we are losing, or the tides are going out very potently through this sign of Sagittarius. So Gemini is the sign of facts. It's the student. It wants to know the answers. It really wants to understand things clearly. It's also the sign of communication and sharing information. So we are, oof, we are really getting flooded with a ton of information, um, not only because of this, this nodal transit, but also some Aquarius energy that's going on. But this, it's almost like overload. It's almost like information overload. But with this kind of transit, really for the next couple months, it's a really good time to pay attention to the facts. With all this information coming at us, pay attention to the facts. Don't just go on blind faith where that Sagittarius South node is. That's it's kind of the celestial tides are saying, okay, it's time to pay attention to the facts and maybe kind of let go of the faith for a little bit, just for right now. Um, now also. Okay, this, going back to that being flooded with information, we're also getting secrets being revealed. A lot of that has to do with Pluto finishing up in Capricorn here. Secrets being revealed. That's another thing that we can really pay attention to. Neptune going through Pisces, retrograding through Pisces. There's a lot of magic going on, a lot of illusions and delusions, a lot of, um, like charlatan type energy going on. So that's another thing just to be very, very careful about with the celestial influences we're receiving right now. That's just on my own personal note there. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna cover is gemstones that resonate well with the sign that the moon is transiting through with that sign of Aries, because that's what I like to do with my new moon, full moon ceremonies. I like to sit with stones that resonate well with this heavenly energies. Okay, so Aries, uh, zodiacal birthday birthstone, like dedicated zodiacal birthstone is a diamond. Diamonds are very, very powerful. Obviously, just like the sign of Aries is very, very powerful. They're very cleansing. They amplify energies. They make energies bigger. And I've heard this is not, I don't know if there's any way to scientifically prove this, but I have heard that diamonds can have this tendency to slow things down. So that can be really nice for this full moon to kind of bring ourselves back into our body with that diamond. Diamonds can also be a little bit Venetian. 
meaning connected to Venus, and we could definitely use a little Venetian energy for this uh, full moon. So if you've got a diamond, great. Might be a good time to sit with that. If not, it's perfectly okay because there's an abundance of stones that resonate very, very well with the sign of Aries, okay? Um, I'm going to leave a full extensive list of stones for you guys to look at so you see if you've got any of those hanging out um, that you can sit with for this full moon. But the number one real rule of thumb here, according to my research and my experience, I've had the best results when I'm sitting with one protective stone and one amplifying stone. Okay, so for this full moon, let's see where to go, there it is. I'm gonna be sitting with hematite because hematite resonates well with the Aries energy, but really any super dark colored stone is gonna be a little more grounding, a little bit more protective, Whereas the clear crystal quartz, anything that's super clear is going to be an amplifier and it's not going to offer you that kind of protection that you will receive from the dark stones. And this will be very cleansing, um, but not really serving any type of protection. That's why I like to use both. Um, and what I do personally, what I have found again with the best results is recognizing that through my non-dominant hand, so for me, that's my left hand because I'm right-handed, I receive the energies through my left hand, through my non-dominant hand, okay? So that is the hand that I will hold the protective stone in, and my dominant hand, my right hand, I hold the amplifier in. That way I'm being protected from any unwanted energies coming in, but my prayers are being amplified through my right hand. So again, really, if you're left-handed, then you want to flip there on the opposite way. Um, okay, so I think I will leave it at that. If you would like to schedule an astrology reading, please visit my website, erinwageastrology.com. You can see all the different options that I offer for readings and the prices. I even put a little video up there so you guys can see how I like to give my readings. Um, but if you would like to just, you know, schedule straight through sending me an email, my email is erinwageastrology at gmail.com. And I will leave links for both of those. I will leave again, the list of Aries stones. Um, just look in either the comment section or description, depending on where you are seeing this recording. Okay, you guys, I do hope that you embrace this full moon in Aries like a warrior. And until next time, namaste to all of you.